we're just looking at the alphabet. Can you find an A? Whose name starts with an A? Your name. Agatha, your name starts with an A. What letter does your name start with? Chess. Are you sitting comfortably? Yeah. Are you ready guys? Yeah! Let's read the alphabet. Yeah. Grandpa Kevin's really kind of strange, somewhat bizarre and overly unrealistic alphabet book by Kevin J. Brower and Lisa M. Santa Cruz. Ah, it's for adventuresomeness, a rambling word. It's long, it's weird, it's almost absurd. But if ah is the letter, a good place to start is apple, ant, ape, and art. B is for bureaucratization. How scary is that? Other b words are bagel and bat, or butterfly, boat. Books or berry, but bureaucratization is downright scary. K is for conceptualization. That's bigger than cat. It's bigger than chair. It's bigger than chat. It's longer than crayons. It's longer than cow. Some can pronounce it. Do you know how? D is for discombobulating. That's funny and long. I'd love to hear it sung in a song. Other D words are dog and door, dad or desert, dice and draw. E is for extraordinariness. E is also for ear. It's at the beginning of egg and yes, engineer. It is also for elephant with big round feet. To get that big, they eat, eat, eat. It's for thoughtfulness. A nice but long word, one that I doubt you ever have heard. Also for frog, flower and fish. There are many more. Look them up if you wish. G is for great heartedness. A good word to know. So is game, grapes or grow. There's also giraffe, great and good. Learn them all. I think you should. H huh, is for honorific abilitude in a tadibus. Whoa, a mouthful for sure. But other each words are his or her. There's also hot and horse and hay. Learn them all is what I say. I is for incomprehensibility. But you know what I think. Some easier words are igloo and ink. There's also ice, itch and iguana. Learn them all if you wanna. Whose name begins with the I? Imogen's name begins with the I. Big I. That's a big I, isn't it? That's a capital I. That's a little I, isn't it? A baby I. Lowercase. Yeah, that's a mummy. Yes, it's a mummy it, isn't it? It's a big letter. It's uppercase. And for the beginning of a name, we always use a little it or a big it? Big it. A big it. So your name always starts with a big capital letter. So Imogen's name starts with a big I. Not the little I. No, big. a big I. J is for justifiableness. It's a good word and yet it's easier to say jug, jam or jet. Other J words are jelly or jar, 
jump and jacket or even jaguar. K is for knowledgeableness. K is also for key. It starts koala. It starts kiwi. K is for kite. It starts kangaroo, ketchup and king to name just a few. L is for lackadaisically. It starts the word lunch. It begins the word log. There's more, there's a bunch, like lion and leaf and lemons and limes. You're learning them now with these words that rhyme. M is for mischaracterizations. That's a mouthful to say. What's easier said is the month of May. Or milk, or moon, or mum, or mouse, or maybe mud that's trapped into the house. a little girl now. That's a tiny baby, isn't it? Yeah. Do you have a tiny brother or sister? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Just, baby. just like in this book. Yeah. Nah. It's for non-relativistically. That's hard to recite. Easier words are noodles or night. There's also nap and numbers. One, two, three, four and net. For your first n words, you've got them. You're set. Oh, is for over intellectualizations that can make a tongue toil. So start with ox or ostrich or oil. Of course, there is oval, onions, and one. Learning oh words is obsessively fun. P is for preposterousness. That word's long as can be. A shorter p word is pickle or pea or pet or penguin, popcorn or play. These p words are easier to say. Qu is for quantificational. That might make you shudder. So queen and quail are easier to utter. So is quarter, question and quilt. But quantificational could make your mind wilt. R is for reconceptualizations. If that spins your head, start with rice or robot or red. And r is for rat and rabbit and run. Learning r words is fun, fun, fun. S is for sesquipedalianism. Did you give it a try? You could start with sun or stars or sky. Then move to ships that sail the sea. Then end with shirt, shoes. Or ski. T is for tender heartedness. It's a nice word to know, but if it's too long, you can start with toe. There's also table, tiger and tree, toast and tent, turtle and tea. Trucks and trains both go toot. Learning t words is really a hoot. A uh is for unimaginatively. A word you can skip and start with umbrella or maybe unzip. A uh is for uncle and unicorns are fun. There are many a uh words that start with un. V is for vulnerabilities. But really it's fine if you start with vegetables, van or vine. There's also video, village and vest. V is a good letter, maybe the best. W is for Warm-heartedness. Learn this, please do. While you're at it, learn what, when and who. There's water, walking, wagon and wink. But warm-heartedness is best. That's what I think. K is for xylophonist. But a secret, my friend. K is rarely in front. It loves the word's end. Like six and mix and wax and ox. Fix and fox, and cardboard box. Y is for youthfulness that rolls off the tongue. So does yellow, yoke, and young. And y is for year, y is for yum. There's one more letter. We're almost done. Z is for zealousness. Z is also for zone. Z is for zucchini. Did I hear you just moan? There's also zebra. Zipper and zoo, and from A to Z, you made it through. 
Wild bookworms, I hope you now know your alphabets. Do we now know our alphabets? Yes! Bye, Bye bookworms! See you again soon! Bye! Bye. <laughs>